if we're going to call sea surface temperatures SSTs, we should call sea surface salinities SSSs. And remember, salinity, and I suggest you go back to that chapter again, is the result of differences in evaporation and precipitation. If we have evaporation, we'll have higher salinities. If we have precipitation, we'll have lower salinities. So it's evaporation and precipitation that control sea surface salinities. Now there's a little bit of difference in the way we present this information in our book and in the way that many other oceanography books and oceanographers present it. And it really is only a, a technical difference, but we actually look at precipitation minus evaporation, whereas many oceanographers look at it the opposite way. We've adopted the meteorological method for looking at the differences between precipitation and evaporation. If you go to another book, you might see it done a different way. It's just the inverse of it, so it shouldn't confuse you. But I do want to point that out to you. Again, oceanographers and meteorologists do things a little bit differently. Remember, winds from the north, currents to the direction they're going to. This is another one of those examples of that. But let's look at the distribution of salinity relative to rates of precipitation and evaporation. And again, we could do this the opposite way, but meteorologists express it as the difference between P, precipitation, and E, evaporation, or P minus E. If precipitation minus evaporation is less than zero, meaning we have more evaporation, so this number is greater than that number, and you should be able to figure that out, then of course salinity is going to go up. It means we have more evaporation. If this quantity, P minus E, is greater than zero, that means we have more precipitation than evaporation, then of course the sea surface salinity is going to go down. We have more fresh water on the ocean. Here we have greater evaporation. And if P minus E equals zero, of course then, if P minus E equals zero, what is P and what is E? P and E are equal. That's the only way that expression can equal zero. And of course, sea surface salinity isn't going to change at all. Let's look at a map of distribution of sea surface salinity in the winter time. And unlike sea surface temperatures, the global distribution of sea surface salinity is a little more complicated. And it's a little more complicated because ocean motions, uh, upwelling, um, impacts of rivers, uh, the confinement of basins, particularly the Mediterranean and Red Sea, which you can't see very well here, are going to influence salinity to a greater degree than the global processes are. But it's not too far from what we might expect. We have the freshest salinities or the fresher waters in the Arctic Oceans and to a lesser degree, in this, in, at least this time of year, in the Southern Ocean. Of course, we also have uh, where we have a runoff of rivers, um, we also have fresher waters, of course, sea ice and ice as well as the um, river flows into the Arctic Basin are going to lower the salinity here. But we don't see the highest salinities in the equatorial ocean, at least in the equatorial Pacific. Why is that? You remember we talked about the intertropical convergence zone, all the clouds, all that rain? Here's where that comes into effect. It actually has lowered the salinities right along the equator. Actually, at about 5 degrees north is where we find the lowest salinities because the intertropical convergence zone has actually shifted a little bit north, <clears throat> especially this time of year. In the, uh, in the equatorial Pacific, so we have lower salinities here than we do above and below. And in general, what we find is the middle of the oceans, the middle of the ocean gyres, here, North Pacific, South Pacific, North Atlantic, South Atlantic, tend to be regions where we get the highest rates of evaporation. Uh, we tend to get high pressure systems, persistent. This would be near the, the influence by the Bermuda High, and um, as well as just not getting the kinds of rainfall in these areas. So we get some of the highest salinities because we have high rates of evaporation. But here we have, because we have rainfall from the ITCZ, we're getting lower salinity. So it's a little bit more complicated, but again, if you kind of pay attention to the details, if you think about the Mediterranean Sea not being a place, being a place with lots of evaporation, an enclosed basin, 
uh, salts get trapped, it aren't a lot of freshwater flows into the Mediterranean Sea, um, then you can begin to explain some of the patterns in salinity that we see. We can look at the um, December time or winter time P minus E, so precipitation minus evaporation, so where it's green, that's where we have greater precipitation, where it's yellows, that's where we have greater evaporation, and here you can see along the equatorial Pacific, we have greater amount, we have green color, so we have more precipitation, so that helps us understand why we see that zone of lessened sea surface salinity in the equatorial Pacific. And here you can see, again, same time of year, this is where evaporation is greater than precipitation, and if you compare this figure with the previous one, you can see sort of the areas where we find more evaporation are the areas where we have, here's the areas of more evaporation, the areas where we have higher sea surface salinities. So another good exercise is to compare this figure with the previous one. And we can play the same game with this image as well. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of differences, although in the summertime, here we see fresher water is moved further south, particularly uh, in the northern part of the North Pacific Ocean. Again, because we have melting of ice, uh, sea ice, as well as snow and ice that's coming off, particularly uh, in Alaska with all its mountains and in uh, this part of Russia. So fresher, salin fresher water um, we find um, further south as a result of that. So runoff is an important determinant of sea surface salinities we still find the highest salinities in the central gyres and in fact you see this one is expanded during our summertime so here we have some of the highest salinity surface sea surface salinities we still have this zone of reduced salinities across the intertropical convergence zone and again you can compare it with this map of precipitation minus evaporation the greener is really think rain, yellow think evaporation, and comparing that with this helps you better understand the kinds of patterns that we see. So really the, the main point of showing sea surface temperature distribution along the surface, sea surface salinity distribution along the surface, and showing the short wave radiation, and showing the precipitation minus evaporation figures lets us understand that global patterns of sea surface temperature and sea surface salinities are controlled by global patterns of sunlight and global patterns of precipitation and evaporation. So a really clear example of atmosphere-ocean interactions. If we take a look at, again, globally, and look at precipitation minus evaporation, which we see in this figure here, and look at sea surface salinities, which we see in this figure here, for areas from the equator to the poles, what we see is as precipitation minus evaporation goes up, so we have more precipitation than evaporation, we see sea surface salinity goes down and this happens again at the ITCZ. And so roughly P minus E and sea surface salinities, here's an example where we have much greater evaporation. So P minus E goes negative and of course we have the highest salinities. Same thing here. High salinity, high lower a negative P minus E. So here's precipitation minus evaporation. So again, you should be able to explain something like this from first principles because you should understand that where you have more precipitation, you have higher salinities. Where you have more, excuse me, where you have more precipitation, you have lower salinities. More rain, more fresh water, lower salinities. Where you have more evaporation, that's where you have higher salinities. And this relationship between P minus E and sea surface salinities is illustrated in this figure, figure 825, in your book.